Hi guys, Larry Feldman here. Uh, in this video lesson, we're going to create a simple golf putting game using Objective C. And this game can be adapted for many purposes. Uh, you can shoot a ball, you can shoot a puck, uh, what have you, at a target using a swipe gesture. And uh, we're going to create this project, which uh, I have on uh, GitHub in its complete in its completed form and and the link is uh, is given on YouTube so feel free to download the assets and um, what I want to do now is just focus on the basics I'm not going to implement all the code that's that's in GitHub but I want to take you through the uh, the important points so let's uh, let's go to uh, Xcode and create a new project I'll make it a single view application. Let's call it golf game. Make it for the iPhone. Click next. Uh, we're not going to use source control and we will save it on the desktop. Okay, first thing we're going to do is go to the storyboard, I'll click on the view controller and let's change the size to 4 inch so that it's easier to uh, see and then let's also change the background color to to green and we'll add some image views let's bring one over here and uh, we're just gonna get things generally in in the right spot we'll fine-tune later so let's bring one over here and uh, center it and uh, let's make the size let's say 50 by 50 and then make sure it's still centered uh, let's duplicate it and bring one up top and uh, let's change the top one let's change the background color to black and also let's drag some assets into the project these assets are located in the github project so let me copy them in in here and uh, let's change the bottom one to ball.png so there we have a golf ball uh, now let's uh, open the assistant editor and let's drag from the top image view control drag to here we're gonna create an outlet let's call that the whole image let's control drag from the ball call that ball image let's get out of the assistant editor and let's run this in the simulator we'll use the uh, 5s simulator let's click run and you see what looks to be a ridiculous looking golf game with a square hole but we're going to fix that in code now of course we could use uh, a circular image with transparency but I want to show you how easy it is to turn this into a circle using software Okay, let's go to viewcontroller.m and in the view did load method we're going to add two lines of code which I uh, cut out of my original project I'm, I'm just gonna paste them here to save time uh, the first line sets the corner radius to half of the uh, layer frame size height and then we need this line self that whole image dot layer masks to bounds equals yes let's hit run there and that's more like it okay let's go back to the implementation file and we're gonna add two more properties which I am just going to paste in here they're uh, two point CG point objects first point and last point and we're going to need those for two new methods a touchdown event and a touch end 
event. And those are both going to be methods which I'm going to paste in here. Okay, so let's paste these two methods in. When I said touches down, I should have said touches began. We have a touches began method, and all we're doing is storing the uh, xy coordinates of the touchdown point. And then we have touches ended, and here we're storing uh, the point, the xy point, where the uh, person's finger uh, lifts off the screen after the swipe. Uh, then we have this CG point, which is uh, called swipe vector. Or I called it swipe vector. And all it is is it, it's, a, it's vector subtraction. So we're subtracting the x coordinates of the last point and first point, and then we're subtracting the y coordinates of the last point and first point. And this will give us an idea of the direction and the magnitude of the swipe itself. Then we're using uh, self.ballvelocityx and self.ballvelocityy. These are both properties. And uh, we have something called speed scale in here, which we're going to define. And, and we're multiplying that by the swipe vector x and y coordinates. So let's uh, define speed scale up here. And we'll make it 0.2, uh, and I'll uh, show you how I came up with that number shortly. Uh, and that can be adjusted, obviously. Now, it looks like I need properties for ball velocity x and y. So let's paste those in. I forgot about that. Those are both floats. So now we have, we've gotten rid of the errors, and we are getting there. And now we're going to add a NS timer property uh, called game timer. And uh, actually we don't need strong because that's it's strong by default. We probably don't even need not atomic either, but um, we have a game timer which we're going to start uh, when the touch is ended. So let me paste that in here. And notice we have uh, self.gametimer. We are instantiating this timer, which is firing um, every 50 milliseconds or 0.05 seconds. And when it fires, it will be calling a method called moveBall, and it will repeat. So let's add uh, moveBall. Doesn't return anything. That gets rid of our warning. Let's paste in the guts here. And we have this speed damping, which we're going to define, and I'll explain that as we go. Let's say it's 0.9 or 90%. That means that every time move ball is called, the new ball velocity in the x direction equals the old ball velocity in the x direction times 0.9 or 90 percent. Same thing with the y velocity. So that's going to slow the ball down. That will create the illusion of, of friction. Then we are uh, moving the ball image center by creating uh, a new point which is the old center First the x coordinate, we're adding the uh, x velocity, and then the y center and adding the y velocity. Okay, let's paste in a little more code here. Uh, what this is doing is this is checking to see if the velocity is below a certain threshold, which I'm calling stop speed, and it's looking at the x velocity and the y velocity separately and it's looking at the absolute value because the velocity can be negative or positive since it's a, a vector and if the velocity in either dimension is less than the stop speed we're uh, turning off the game timer and uh, I forgot to mention this earlier but let's go back to touches began we we turn off uh, the ability to uh, for the user to interact with with the device 
after the touches began. Um, th the reason why we do that is so that uh, we is because we want to wait until the ball either goes in the cup or comes to a stop before the before the user has an ability to start another swipe gesture. So up here, uh, after the touches began, um, we're turning off the, the user interaction ability. And then once the ball comes to rest, and, and for now we're, we're not dealing with the hole, we're just dealing with um, friction and the ball coming to a stop. Uh, once, once the velocity is below this threshold, we're going to turn off the game timer and we're going to allow the user to um, to swipe again. So uh, I need a define for stop speed. So let's let's come up here. Let's just make it five. And and a lot of these numbers were found by trial and error. Let's run this. Now, if I swipe, now watch a short swipe. The ball doesn't go that far, but uh, this is a good sign that it's going in the direction of the swipe. If I do a medium swipe, sure enough, it, it seems to be working well. And if I do a long swipe like that, it flies off the screen. And that's okay because you don't have to be touching the ball to do the swipe. I can bring it back like that. But if I try and do two swipes in a row, it will not let me which is exactly what we want. We want the uh, ball movement to stop before another swipe is allowed. So things are looking pretty decent, except obviously we've got a little problem here. The ball uh, kind of disappears. Uh, I guess that looks like it's going in the hole, but really it, it, it's going under it. So we're going to take care of that next. We have to do uh, two things. First, let's go to the storyboard. And where it says image, let's change that to hole. You can see that hole is listed after ball. That means that the hole will appear as a layer above the ball, which we don't want. We want the ball to appear as a layer above the hole. And I will show you why shortly. Let's run this in the simulator. And the ball should just roll over the hole, which it does. Then let's go back to the view controller. And I want to paste in some more code. Right before this uh, stopping if statement, let's paste in this block of code. And what this is doing is uh, seeing if the ball and the whole frames intersect. If they do, we stop the game timer, we enable user interactions again, and then we uh, do a little fine tuning. What we do is we, we, we place the ball in the center of the cup and we change the alpha to 0.2. In other words, it's, this way you'll be able to see the ball in the center of the cup and it'll look a little dimmer. So let's see how that looks. And hopefully you can see that that looks pretty decent. Uh, now when I swipe and bring it out of the hole, you see that we have a problem. The ball is still, it still has that alpha of, of 0.2. So we're going to take care of that as well. And the way we'll fix that is we'll go back to um, touches began. And we will set the alpha to 1 on the ball. So let me uh, copy and paste this. Let's run it. And we will putt towards the hole. It plops in. And as we pull it out, the alpha changes to 1. Please check out part 2 for the rest of this tutorial. Thanks.